so I'm of course going to publish the digital version of this. Uh, it's not just on paper. Um, but I wanted to give it out to you so that you can follow the session better. And so if you wanted to go somewhere else, you can now tell in 10 seconds if you want to stay here or go out. Okay. Um, so I'm Gabor Hoichi. I'm uh, nine years with the Drupal project. I started in 2003. Uh, and I am on the famous Antwerp picture where people like stand by a fountain and it's very dark and you can almost not tell who are the faces, so I was there. So, so I'm an old guy here. Um, I'm a maintainer for Drupal 6, so I see that, um, that perspective of this problem. I'm, I'm the guy who gets in your patches and commits them to Drupal 6 and then makes the releases and decides what gets in and what's not, get, what, what's not going to get in, those kinds of things. I also started working for Acquia in 2007. Uh, kind of funny, I'm employee number one at Acquia. Uh, I started working at Acquia because before anybody knew Acquia even exists, and I, I, and I was paid full time to work on Drupal 6 uh, at the start. And I'm uh, the Drupal 8 multilingual initiative lead, uh, which means that um, the Drupal community partitions my free time uh, for uh, different things on, on the Drupal 8 um, multilingual scene. And I, I almost had like back-to-back -back meetings here with different people in the community discussing different things uh, which are um, at different parts of this uh, handout. So for those who are not here and watching this on a video, this is the handout I gave out, out to you. And it start with, uh, I have an idea for Drupal Core, which uh, could also be, I have a problem with Drupal Core. And uh, the, the goal of the session is to get to the party at the end um, and find the, find the right way and figure out uh, how to get to that point. So that's the goal of our session. Uh, so it, start, it starts with, I have an idea for Drupal Core and that's usually, or I have a problem with Drupal Core and it's usually people post something, uh, they might, might not, if there's a problem, they might not tell which Drupal Core version it is or if they have an idea, they likely have a very clear uh, path of which version they choose. But it's very important to think first about which Drupal version you wanna use. If you've been to Drew's uh, keynote, you've seen that the different Drupal versions are at very different parts of their lifetime. Uh, Drupal 8 is about to be released in 2013 as planned. Um, so it's not certain. Uh, Drupal 7 was released in 2011 and Drupal 6 was released in 2008. So Drupal 6 is a uh, four year old product or release at least. Um, and, and it's still out and it's still used a lot. Um, so depending on, what, depending on what kind of idea you have or what kind of problem you wanna solve, Based on, the, based on the state these uh, versions are in their lifetime, uh, the Drupal community will respond to your request or your idea in very different ways. So all the shininess goes to Drupal 8, or most of the shininess goes to Drupal 8, because that's the new upcoming version that can change anything, uh, whatever we want to. And some shininess can go to Drupal 7. Uh, Dries said in his uh, core conversation today that we loosen the policy of backporting stuff to Drupal 7. Um, which is kind of true, we did backport some stuff. Uh, it, it's, not a, it's not a huge change, so we did not introduce lots of huge changes there. Um, and we also maintain Drupal 7 um, as a stable version. So there's a lot of contributed models out there and Drupal 7's used more and more increasingly and we want to keep those contrib models stable and we sometimes introduce little uh, uh, problems that we do not intend to introduce. Uh, but the main goal there is to maintain the Drupal 7 version as good as possible, and it's and it's absolutely the goal for Drupal 6 to make it ma make it be stable as possible. So, to get something into Drupal 6, to get something new and shiny and big into Drupal 6 is likely almost impossible for you. Uh, to get something new and shiny, you would better go to Drupal 8. If you want to get something new and shiny to Drupal 7 there is a process for that as well that we will get to shortly. So examples for this, uh, like if you wanna go to fix something in Drupal 6, things that are getting there are like taxonomy performance improvements. That's kind of a funny thing because we fixed some taxonomy uh, speed problems in the latest Drupal 6 release. And with that fix, we've introduced some taxonomy memory problems in Drupal 6. That's kind of an interesting issue to follow there. 
Uh, we also fix security um, fixes, and there are always things in earlier Drupal versions that are not in later Drupal versions, like blog API that was removed in Drupal 7, I believe. That, so if you have an issue with blog API or something that you wanna fix there or um, slightly improve, then that's possible in Drupal 6. It's not in core anymore, so you can go directly to Drupal 6. Uh, for Drupal 7, things uh, things we would do are also security f fixes and other performance and, and maintenance issues, but also slight improvements to how it works, UI tweaks. We found issues with how field uh, configuration are, uh, how the field configuration workflow is um, coded, and we've eliminated one screen of that workflow, for example. Uh, so there's uh, things like those improvements that can get in there easily. That's uh, likely not going to happen at all for Drupal 6. And for Drupal 8, it's brand new things like the new configuration API, like basing it, uh, a lot of things in Symfony 2, et cetera. So there's basically anything goes, whatever we agree on, we can do and we, uh, we can build in. So based on what you wanna do, there's, uh, th these are very different areas. And if you wanna like fix language, like the language code form field in Drupal 6, that's one of the issues that, I'm, uh, that I, uh, I've seen people encounter that it allowed a long language code and the database schema allowed a short language code and the form field um, made it look like it, it can be longer. So we wanted to fix that in Drupal and somebody submitted a, p a patch for Drupal 6. And uh, what I'm obliged to say in that case is that please not, don't do that. Please fix that issue first in Drupal 8 and then backport to Drupal 7 and then backport to Drupal 6. So for issues that apply to multiple Drupal versions, uh, fortunately and unfortunately, our way of solving them is to first fix them in the latest version and then backport them as we go. Uh, so if you, wa if you wanna, wanna fix something or improve something, something in Drupal 7 or Drupal 6, you likely will be pushed to Drupal 8 first and you'll need to figure out in Drupal 8 first and then go back. That's pretty bad if you don't have the resources or if you're not interested in figuring out all the, uh, fixing the same thing with all the changes in Drupal 8. Um, so it kind of uh, increases your um, required involvement in fixing the issue. For the Drupal community and for Drupal at large, it's uh, very nice because it means that we are not introducing regressions in later versions of Drupal. So if you go to uh, fix something in Drupal 6, it's sure that it's already in Drupal 8 and we don't need to like try to forward port it. The reason we don't forward port is because we, we cannot actually um, assume that it's gonna be in, uh, in the later, later versions before they are released next. So that's basically our process. It's kind of a, an overhead that we need to work with. So there's basically two, two ways you can choose based on uh, the version and the uh, size of the change that you wanna take. You and, and I've titled this uh, with help from a lot of people with I want to make sure to implement right and I need to have it implemented now. And there's a lot of cases you need to have it implemented now and I'm, I'm involved with a lot of those cases at Acquia and in Drupal Gardens and I will give you a few, a few examples for that. And there is also a lot of good cases for I want to make sure to implement it right. And basically uh, the Drupal 6, 7 scenario applies if if um, you are, don't have time to work on the, the core development process, you like need to have, like, you found an issue on your site and you need to have this fixed right now and you need to get it out of your deployment. Um, if your business needs a shorter uh, time to, uh, to get your fixes in, if you have a huge disagreement with the community and there's no way you can make it work, or if the extent of the change is not allowed in the version that you are involved with, um, so there's a lot of reasons for that, and we'll see how, how going this way can benefit the Drupal community at the end. So if you at first seem like you wanna go this way, it might be a very fine decision, and you might be able to just come back to the Drupal community with your improvements. And it can be a very good experience for both, of, both you and the community. Um, I basically outlined two separate ways to solve this uh, case. So if you need to implement something now, uh, in Drupal 6 or 7, you likely wanna either use custom patches or you uh, wanna use override hooks. If you wanna use custom patches, I would suggest to you that you track your patches very carefully, um, like maintain a list of what patches you have, and there's two great methods for that. 
There is documentation to branch from the Drupal core Git repository, and there is documentation and tools for using um, a patch application system in Drush Make, where you can say, I want to use this Drupal core version, and I want to apply this set of patches on that, and I want to uh, deploy that to my environment. So these are uh, good tools to track your patches. And Rush Make until recently actually uh, forced you to reference uh, remote patches um, so that hopefully you would submit those patches on Drupal.org. It now supports using patches from the local file system. But if at all possible, you should submit your patches to core anyway. Um, kind of a funny uh, note here is that for Drupal 6, a lot of the issue review um, process for me for, for, uh, for deciding whether it should go to Drupal 6 or not is whether you've applied it in a live environment and it worked for you in the live environment or not. So I'm looking at the issue and if there's multiple people who experienced it working well and there's multiple people who thought that the, um, they could look good, then I have a lot more confidence in getting that in. So although this looks like I'm, di I'm diverging from the Drupal community and I'm like, King Drupal core and I'm making my own version of Drupal. What it actually means is that you're experimenting with changes and you are trying them out and you see how, how it goes and then you can push it back at the community and say it worked good for me, uh, it solved my problem or it improved and, and implemented my idea and please take it if you want it. And even if you don't follow up on that patch, you just submit a patch and, um, and you leave it there, somebody might take it on. Uh, we'll see a lot of good reasons for you to follow up on that patch and try to get in core. Uh, but if you like need to go this way, your business requires it, or just you want to have your stuff out quick, then this is not a sin. Just do it right. Uh, there is overwrite hooks in Drupal. Um, so Drupal, a lot of the cases, allows you to ignore stuff that Drupal would otherwise do and do something else instead. Uh, in my basic summary, Drupal uh, things, that things happening in Drupal usually happen two ways. It's either an HTTP request or, uh, or a Drush command or something that comes in through, uh, or not a Drush command necessarily. So it's an HTTP request. It comes through the menu system, which is very misleadingly named in Drupal. But that's basically a router system that maps URLs to functions and invoke them and check permissions on them. So the request comes in and the menu system chooses who's gonna execute this thing and who's gonna produce the output for this thing. And if you have an issue with a concrete page or a set of pages that has a, has a menu callback in the system, then you can use the hook menu alter, alter function to drop out what's there and put in your own, own stuff. Uh, so this is one thing that we do uh, sometimes in Drupal Gardens when we wanna simplify things in Drupal Core and we wanna drop some very confusing um, um, pages or tabs from, from uh, things in core, et cetera, we alter those out and uh, we think uh, in many cases we simplify your life for you. Uh, there's also uh, all kinds of other cases like XML RPC callbacks or cron uh, callbacks, et cetera, which are not going through the menu system. Um, they are like generic hooks that are invoked in different ways and there's a very powerful function called hook module implements alter that allows you to do anything with hooks. Like you can remove hooks from modules and add some other hook instead and do all kinds of things. It's very powerful, it's very dangerous at the same time, just like hook menu alter. So these two, ho these two hooks basically allow you to alter almost anything in Drupal core uh, without applying custom patches. However, you need to copy paste the code that's there and make your modifications and then there, if there's any changes in that code later ver in later versions, you need to maintain those uh, in your copy pasted version. So the work is kind of on you, but you uh, don't maintain uh, patches. So some people prefer this process and some people prefer the other process. Now these are big chunks of code. So like, or, like dropping out a hook cron implementation and replacing it with your own or dropping out a whole page callback and replacing it with your own could be a huge amount of code. There's a lot more and more targeted uh, alter hooks, like the hook form alter or the hook page alter hooks that allow you to alter the page structure inside the page or alter the, man the form and how the form is processed and how the, the, how the items are validated and all kinds of other things. So if you have ideas, improvements, uh, additions you wanna add to things, you can use these hooks to do all the work. Uh, be very careful because internal APIs might change that those functions use interna um, internally. 
Um, there ca can be any number of changes there in, in uh, Drupal core, as long as it's not a generic API functions like page callbacks forms can change. Uh, the bigger the change, the more divergent you get from core, so the harder it's gonna get to tell what you change there and what needs to be uh, updated. Uh, but there's a lot, of, a lot of modules built almost exclusively based on alter hooks and uh, providing things for this. So if you've been to uh, Earl Miles' session earlier uh, this week, um, I think the second slide he, he lead with, uh, basically you can understand Page Manager as a UI for hook menu alter. Because that's what it is. So you can alter what, how that request is gonna be processed and what's gonna happen there. Um, so there's whole modules and very popular modules built around this concept of overriding all things in core. Uh, so it's again, not a sin, it's something that's provided by Drupal Core, but be careful with uh, how you use that. And you can cycle back all those changes as a content module, and then you can cycle back all those suggestions as a core patch. And I, I wrote Drupal 8 here, but if those changes apply, if those are fixes for Drupal 6 or 7, then feel free to submit there as well. Okay. So I've explained two methods for solving your problem when you need to implement something right now. You don't need to cooperate with the Drupal community for any of these things. You go in your own stuff, you do your own custom patch or you do your own override hooks. Uh, you can collaborate with the community by submitting your override hooks as a set of, um, a set of override hooks as a module and your patches in the Drupal.org issue queue. And then hopefully you'll follow up with, uh, with those uh, for the community so they can get um, all those changes. Um, this is very good for, for fulfilling your business requirements and getting fixes in very fast and moving forward. But if you wanna implement it right, uh, you get a lot of benefit by working with the community uh, because you can get feedback from the community from all your changes that you make. Uh, it's sometimes good feedback, sometimes bad feedback you need to tell. Um, it's how it works, we are humans. Uh, so you get a lot of feedback on what, what you did. Uh, they help you use best practices. We have a lot of, lot of uh, process to help you uh, use the right coding standards, to help you use the right uh, APIs, to help you use um, the right approaches to things. So we have a lot of process where people come in and help you figure that out before it can get into core. So you basically have it all cleaned up by a team of smart people. Um, I love this process because I'm, I'm so I, I, I am a CS major, but I would not be able to work in like 3D modeling or anything like that. I'm not, not at all that. Um, so I, 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 my, my uh, mind is limited to certain things. And I always like that the Drupal community can extend my mind infinitely. So they can help, help with all the stuff that I either did not have the time or did not care or did not have the knowledge to care for. Uh, it also helps you fix it across Drupal versions, which is great if you wanted to fix it in your Drupal 7 site, you write an override hook or a custom patch. If you work with the community to get it in, when you upgrade to Drupal 8, you're not gonna be um, uh, required to worry about that problem anymore because you got it in Drupal, so the community takes care of it for you on wards, right? So you can fix it across Drupal versions, you don't need to care about it anymore, which is also the next point, you can get it off your plate. Um, and if it's in Drupal core, then it's gonna be maintained with the rest of the stuff. Um, so you can just, um, there's no requirement for you to maintain it anymore. And the best one, I think is the last one, that you can make others build off of those changes. So like if, if you are fixing the theme functions in Drupal core to be much nicer, then all the, th all the contributed themes would work from those theme functions and everybody would be happier with those changes. So you can take those contributed themes and it would be easier for you to tweak them, et cetera, because you fixed underlying issues which made them harder to tweak, right? So if you, if you help Drupal core fix issues, then everybody else will work with that system. And that's one of the reasons I'm sticking to core development all the time, and although I sometimes have my down uh, moments as well, um, this is the reason that I'm trying to put all the stuff into Drupal core because it means that others will work with that thing. And I don't need to uh, pray for all the module maintainers to like please implement my API because it's in Drupal core and they will work with it, okay? Um, so it's very powerful. Uh, you, extend your, uh, you extend your arms very far. 
And uh, I got a few quotes from people. Uh, Kathleen Senzi said that uh, she enjoys working towards a common cause with smart, friendly people, which is kind of what I feel as well. And a little bit different perspective from Chicks. He said he definitely finds it in intrinsically rewarding. In other words, yes, this is done right gives me great joy. So you get a lot of feedback and you kind of get a lot of um, verification that your fix is good and it's not just like something you did on the site and it works for you but who knows whether it's actually good or not and whether you install two more country modules and it's gonna break down in flames okay so it's very good for uh, for your work long term and I uh, set this up into two different um, branches as well the first is you start an issue the second you start a discussion it totally depends on the size of the change you want to make so if you want to do content staging in Drupal core, starting with an issue is likely the worst thing you can do because it's a huge topic and it needs to be broken down to different things. You need to have a discussion with people either on, um, either here at DrupalCon or on groups.drupal.org or on IRC, et cetera, like try to get opinion and socialize your idea, uh, share it with people and get feedback. And then when you have uh, it broken down, you can start working on issues. If it's a small problem like fix the damn language field to be shorter because it's short in the database, then you start with an issue, okay? And then, in both cases, um, I've said before that if you have a core patch, you submit it to the issue queue, and if you leave it alone, that's still fine. But if you want to get all these benefits here, you need to manage it through the review process. It's not like you submit that patch and then armies of Drupal people will jump on it and fix it for you because Drupal core they care about fixing those things for Drupal core. It's likely not going to happen. What's much more likely going to happen is that nobody cares about it at all. You submit an issue and it sits there for months and nobody cares about it ever. So if you look at the issue stats for Drupal core, I pulled this from, uh, from Drupal.org, uh, bug reports overall on average uh, are not fixed for 33 weeks. Are not, in, are not getting in uh, to the fixed state for 33 weeks. Feature requests, uh, a lot, lot more time, okay? Uh, so this is on average. So there's a lot, there's a lot more uh, to, to, the other, to, um, to the other end where there's like years and years things are not fixed. So if you just put it there and wait for someone to find it, it's not gonna happen. Uh, you need to maintain it through the review process, find people, Get get those reviews, manage all those reviews, uh, put put updates, and then uh, manage it to get it in. It's a lot of work, but you get all the benefits that I mentioned before, and the Drupal community gets all the benefits as well. And there is also a nine nine thousand five hundred core issues, so you submit it. It's uh, likely nobody's going to find it. So uh, why are you important to start the issue um, in a way that people can identify what it is about? There is issue submission guidelines on that URL. It's in the it's on the handout as well, and um, there is a most common issue text document right there. So Drupal people like to add all kinds of meta information on their issues, what it's related to, what kind of problems it solves, performance problem, or whether it needs tests, or whether um, it's related to any initiative, etc. So those are uh, those are what we use text for. And the issue submission guidelines explain how to use different status of issues and the different uh, components that we have. I'm not going into those details here um, because that would take 45 minutes alone, uh, but that's where it's documented. If you have any questions, you can come up at the end. What I'm more interested in is how you get your issue noticed. So this is like submitting it so that, so that people understand what it is, but then you need to get people. Um, there's a lot of ways to get your issues noticed. Uh, there is Drupal initiatives that are official initiatives for Drupal core, and there's a very few of those mentioned um, compared to all the things that's going on for Drupal core is just a tiny number of things. But they are, they are things that cover a lot of big, um, big problems. So there's configuration management, web services, design, multilingual, HTML5, there's mobile, there's layout. Um, so there's all, all those things. If your problem or idea maps to these initiatives. You can find these people here and their respective groups. You, you go to the news link and you can find uh, who's working on that and how to get involved. Uh, and you have issues linked there that you can look at all their issues and you can get uh, your issues uh, into their issue queues if it's related to their work, okay? 
There's also a lot of other things that people work on. This is not a very up-to-date page, but drupal.org slash community initiative slash Drupal core has a lot more initiatives that are not official initiatives, but people work on them. Uh, it's a lot of subpages of different things that people work on and who to contact and, uh, and what they plan to work on, et cetera. Uh, bear in mind that this is much less uh, up-to-date compared to the Drupal 8 initiatives page. Um, so this will require a lot of love, but it helps you identify people who are interested in things and what they wanna work on, et cetera, to plug in your things. There's also interest groups on groups.drupal.org. Um, if you pick working groups in the group type, then you get uh, groups like the Drupal 8 blocks and layout everywhere initiative or MTD API or space advocacy, uh, which is likely not a Drupal um, core patch thing. Um, Etc. So, um, although I do have rocket ship for Drupal core uh, issue issue overviews now that I I connect the dots. So, um, so there's all kinds of working groups uh, that you can you can join and find people there who are interested in the same thing. So, if you have an MTD API thing, then you can go to that group and find people there and post there if if you think that your uh, your idea uh, is interesting for them. A very interesting uh, approach that I, I, I'm not seeing a lot of people use is go to the history of the files that you wanna change. This is an example of robots.txt, which is not a very good example, but it's a very short URL. So that's why I uh, chose that one. Uh, so I can put the URL on the slide. So you go to drupalcode.org, uh, pick the Drupal core branch, uh, go to the file and uh, look for its uh, log. And the log uh, tells you two very important things. Uh, one is who worked on this file. So there's all the names of people who worked on this thing, okay? So those people are likely interested in changes to this file. And there's also all the issue numbers that were discussed regarding this file. So if you find issues that are similar or, or, um, or even reasons for the bugs or problems that you are trying to solve, then you go to that issue and post a comment, I found a related bug, please see here and help me fix it. And all those people are also likely interested in more fixes to this because they, they cared about it, they worked on stuff for this. So you can try to find them and try to talk to them about your changes. Again, robots.txt is not a good example. It's not like something that people are passionate about. Um, this like people find bugs with it and they fix it. But um, that's basically how, how to find like concrete people who worked on, on stuff. And that is, again, uh, if you've been to Dries' score conversation, uh, there's a lot of talk on data and how we have a lot of data that we don't use. And this, is v this will be very good data. Um, I had a discussion uh, last DrupalCon with people that if we can mine this data and like put on people's profiles that, that this guy worked on robots.txt and the entity thing and et cetera. And you can like find people who worked on the entity thing. You click on the entity thing and it could list all the people who were participating in those issues, et cetera. So we have a lot of data. Uh, we don't have a lot of tools uh, for you to mine them. You need to manually look, look up these people. And it, when you have people, you can find these people on IRC. Uh, there's uh, Drupal uh, people love using IRC. It's a, it's a real-time chat system. Uh, not hard at all. Uh, this is explained here on drupal.org slash IRC page. It suggests you clients to you. It should suggest you rooms and um, how to get there. So you can find people there. You can try to email people, it's, u it's usually not going to work. So if I don't know your name and you email me, I can tell you I might not answer that email. Okay, I get a lot of email. Uh, if I know your name, I like, I'm more likely to answer that email. If you send me an issue URL with that email, that's perfect, I likely go to that URL and will either follow up, uh, either uh, follow the issue or, or put there a comment. If you send me an email explaining your problem, not good. Uh, there's also core office hours. Uh, which is um, a real-time meeting where you, can, where you can go and you can uh, pimp your issue, you can send in your issue, and you'll maybe get another issue to review, and you'll experience the whole review process and um, how, you can, how, how you'll get um, some, feed, some feedback on your stuff and <coughs> how we try to connect people and how we try to find people uh, interested in that. And you can learn a lot from there and improve your own uh, approach to uh, finding people for your work. If you work on big improvements, there's Drupal Planet, where a lot of cool stuff is posted about Drupal Core. 
If you want to fix the language field length, do not post a blog post about it. You will be kicked out of Google Planet. But if you're working on bigger initiatives, um, like mobile first Google themes, then you would, you would want to post about that so you get the word out. People go there. You can post issue links here. You can post an overview of what you work on and then direct people to your issues, et cetera. So you can get a lot of, um, a lot of visibility on Google Planet. I haven't checked recently, but it's an insane amount of people subscribed to Google Planet. It's just, it's, it's unbelievable. So there's a lot of ways to get feedback on your issue, okay? So you need to find people to get there. You have uh, ways on, you have ways with the initiatives, the, uh, non, the, the non-official initiatives, looking at file history, going to IRC, going to office hours, advertising your stuff on Drupal Planet, at DrupalCon, at BOPS, um, et cetera. And then you have a different problem because now everybody's on your issue and they post all kinds of stuff and, and there's, no, uh, there's no, no end in sight, okay? So um, I think a lot of you would love to have this problem, uh, but if you, post, uh, if you post very interesting stuff, you might end up with this problem. And it equally requires some uh, experience and people skills to be able to move forward from this point just like the nobody cares about it point. So when everybody cares about it, you're gonna get a lot of feedback. Uh, your, your issue might go to hundreds of comments. Um, I think you should consider all feedback, uh, but uh, do not cater to everybody. There's gonna be all kinds of people wanting to sidetrack your discussion through all, different, all kinds of different ways. So try not to cater to everybody. Uh, try, to stay, try to keep your issue focused and resolve it as, um, as focused as possible instead of letting it explode. Keep your issue summary updated. People come, there is, uh, so the issue summary is the original version of the uh, issue that as was submitted and then everybody can go and edit that summary to update it to how the latest discussion and decisions are shaping. Um, it's very good for new, new people coming in to like see there what's be, what, what is uh, already decided and what's still to be decided, et cetera, so they are not uh, diverging as much from the main topic that you wanna keep. And yes, Drupal core development requires you to devote serious time sometimes uh, to that, so try to be present on that issue and respond where needed. Um, issues can get stuck when, when you, don't re you don't respond to questions or concerns and it just sits around and nobody knows where to go. And if there's a lot of side tracks that are appearing, then have an overall plan with follow-ups uh, that you're gonna fix later. It's not the task of this issue to fix them, but you're gonna fix them later. And there is a Drupal uh, code of conduct that we have for, um, for uh, working with the Drupal community. The reason I bring this up in, on this slide is because these are the discussions where uh, the air can get very hot very fast. And if you can keep in mind that all those uh, guys are people and all those guys are well-intentioned and they wanna have your stuff be good for Drupal Core, um, then, uh, then you should all be good. Uh, so for these big things, people do different approaches to, to try and, uh, try and um, get their stuff in Drupal Core. And these are three approaches that I'm, I'm seeing uh, working with Drupal 8 and they have different benefits and, and drawbacks. Um, my initiative, Drupal 8 Multilingual Initiative, is the 8 mi What we do is we tag issues with the 8 mi so all issues related to the 8 mi that we know and we identified are tagged with the D8MI tag. So people can find them, and we work directly on the Drupal.org issue queue, uh, on the Drupal core issue queue, and we get, we fix stuff issue by issue. We actually break down a lot of things to like small, Small, smaller steps like introduce these three special language constants and then we have an issue for exposing them on the interface and then we have an issue for revisiting how it affects existing code and then we have an issue for I don't know what. So we break down things into smaller chunks and we get a lot of feedback from people in that way and we get it into Drupal core and why I love this method is because then everybody needs to work with our changes because it's already there. Um, and it's uh, commit by commit in Drupal core. Um, so we use, uh, I, I named that structure tagging because we also use other tags to identify sub-initiatives under the main initiative. So there's all kinds of tags that we use for that. 
there's uh, the meta issues um, approach that the entity API um, work uses, for example, where they have a meta issue that summarizes all the problems and it links off to sub issues and it and it track and it gets follow up and it gets uh, follows from people and it sometimes posts comment summaries of what happened, um, which is kind of also good and it also works in the core issue queue and gets <laughs> commits individually in the core issue queue. What the con uh, configuration management initiative and the whiskey initiative do is that they uh, have a Drupal.org uh, project sandbox for their work and they take Drupal core and then they, and then they double around in that, they modify all kinds of stuff and discuss their own issues and make their own commits there uh, make their own branches for different approaches, so it's a, it's a very flexible. Uh, it allows you to try a lot of things, and then when they decide that it's ready for for the people, um, it's not very well uh, visualized here. But I actually submit an issue for Drupal Core, propose it, and then it's uh, and the whole thing as built is discussed there, and then if it's okay, then it's merged in based on their uh, sandbox commits. Yes. Uh, yes, so there, there is a merge process and there is a patch process. I think uh, CMI, the, the CMI patch used a merge process recently uh, that got in, um, got in um, I don't know, two weeks ago or a week ago. And there's also like uh, summarized patches of all the changes in, in one big patch that are submitted in Drupal.org issue queue. So the benefit of this is that you can play around, you can branch to different areas you can experiment with what you want. Uh, you are not, not um, limited by breaking stuff down and making small changes and then building on your own work because you can experiment whatever you want. But the, uh, but the inherent problem is that then you need to discuss the whole thing with the rest of the community who is not involved with your work. So there's good things in, in all the three approaches. Um, the, for DHMI, the structure tagging worked really well. I think for the scale of changes required for CMI and Whiskey, they could not be able to do that process in any way. So if you want to work on Drupal Core, there's even different models to work on different changes. For smaller changes, the issues work very well. For bigger changes, you need to have those discussions and you likely have a sandbox to work on. And then uh, when you manage yourself out through this process, you get your patch as RTBC which does not guarantee that's going to be committed. Um, it's not very unlikely that it's bumping back to any previous state or even disregarded altogether, as uh, happened um, quite a few times. And even if it's committed, sometimes it's rolled back later. So, um, so even if it's RTBC, you, it means ready to be committed or reviewed and tested by the community, depending on how long you are in the Drupal community. It meant different things to the life of Drupal.org. Uh, so reviewed and tested by the community is the, is the current uh, version. Um, so it just means that uh, the, the people who looked at it thought that it's good for Drupal core. And then there are, there are a lot of um, people looking for the queue that has these issues and go there and say, okay, this is not good, this not performing well uh, by just reviewing it or it, it does not match documentation coding standards or whatever. Uh, it's gonna be pushed back in those cases and you go in and fix that. And there's also, could be any extended time to commit. The other issues are processed first, so it can take some time, but when it's done, we reach the party part and, and, you're, and you're there. And you contribute it to the Drupal community. Uh, if you wanna s get started on that, uh, and you haven't um, uh, done it before, there's all kinds of sprints tomorrow there's, uh, Jess also leads a core office hours uh, sprint tomorrow, so you can go there and she's gonna uh, take you forward from uh, the end of my session, I believe, uh, tomorrow on the sprint um, to uh, get you into the, um, into the nitty gritty details. So that was basically what I wanted to say. Um, so uh, we are open for questions. Any questions? Yes? So I always um, wanted to get involved with core development or any you know, Drupal module development as well. Um, and I have, you know, I run a Drupal firm, I have like 20 clients and we have our own process of, you know, patching them, you know, maintaining them as well. But when getting involved in, uh, you know, uh, I guess 
any of this management for core, these contributed modules you guys use Git, I use Subversion, uh, my development environments aren't like your environments. And I was wondering if you guys had any documentation or, or workflows like this of how to deal with different things that might come up, like somebody patches your patch or you get your patch or how to set up your development environment in an ideal way to be most optimal. Sure, uh, I don't think Drupal core development actually requires any special development environment. Um, what I use is actually a, like totally, uh, totally everyday thingy. I use this very free tool called Acquiate F S Stop. Uh, it looks like a marketing plot, but it's not. And I use it for Drupal 8 development. I have two copies of Drupal 8. I have a copy of Drupal 6. I have a copy for my localization development in Drupal 7, and I have a gar and I have Gardner and Gardner's copies for my work. Um, so, so there's no special requirement. There's like very simple tools like this that you can use just to. Uh, just to work on core, I, I, I don't think I have, I have anything that, that, would, that would not be available off the shelf. Um, I don't have any URL in my head for documentation on how to set up all this environment for you. I know, I know the next, next gentleman standing in line is working on the Boston Initiative, um, which is, which is um, a step-by-step -step, um, documentation and well, it's not really documentation. Well, he's gonna explain it. So he's working with the Boston Initiative and they have very good tools for you to help you get started and to spread this knowledge and help others get started as well. Thank you. Why, thank you for that very kind introduction. I was invited to speak here because, no, I'm just kidding, sorry. <laughs> um, I don't want to hijack the question, but this was such a great presentation. And uh, since uh, learndrupal.org actually came up uh, in conversation, um, LearnDrupal.org is a community initiative to put the great information uh, that's coming up in, in sessions like this and uh, lessons that people want to build themselves to help people go from uh, whatever level they are uh, in contributing to Drupal to uh, also being, uh, seeing how they are able to uh, contribute to Core. And you can do that at a number of different levels. So here is my request for you and for your audience. Uh, Gabor, if you're willing to make your slides, which are really wonderful, available, and perhaps maybe occasionally answer a question or two about the best way uh, to have these things go into a ladder, it sounds like there would be some great step-by-step -step lessons that would come out of this. Then also, since I promised to answer your question, and thank you for giving the opportunity, the first couple of steps at learndrupal.org uh, address getting set up specifically on uh, Dev Desktop. There will be other, um, uh, development environment discussions that end up becoming parallel ladders, but that one happens to be on learndrupal.org right now. Thanks, Gabor, that was great. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm Jess, XJ, I'm on drupal.org and I do the core office hours in case you, you missed that earlier. So I'm also gonna actually answer the question about development environment a bit in that another way you can get a development environment set up if you wanna work on core is come to the sprint tomorrow. It starts at 9 a.m. and we'll help you um, set up development environment, and actually it doesn't even need to be nearly as complicated as like, your environment was way more complicated than mine. I, I, I oh just yeah. have like MAMP and Git on my computer, and I, ha I just pay have a clone of core and I branch it sometimes. It's very, very simple. So you really don't need anything special it, that you, would, you wouldn't do for the sprint. Um, so come tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a great opportunity for me. I'm not, you know, that, that blob he had at the top that said, I have an idea for Drupal. I don't have ideas for Drupal. Um, I try to help fix other people's ideas for Drupal. And that's what the sprint tomorrow is about. It's about solving that, it's a, 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 about solving the nobody cares problem for that, to help other people's ideas get in core. So if you're just getting started out, maybe you don't have a great idea for Drupal, maybe you might someday, come to the sprint tomorrow and we'll help you help other people's ideas get in, in small manageable chunks. You don't even have to be a developer. Um, there's lots of stuff that you can do to help with other people's ideas, even if you're just a site builder. So um, please come tomorrow. And thank you, Gabor, for the great session because I, the slides, I think, captured the core development process in a way that I don't think has really been encapsulated in one place yet. Thank you. Um, I'd like to say that um, there is not always I want to contribute, but I have an idea. It could be also I have development time that I would like to devote for a community. Mm -hmm. And one question I 
I've been trying to do that several times and I, okay, I'm going to spend one or two hours starting to help on some issues and the question is, where do I start? Because you start on one topic and you see those huge issue which 100 comments on it and you say, okay, I will spend four hours reading the, the comment and when I reach the bottom, I just have to reload the page and there are 20 more comments there. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of ways to get involved. Uh, core office hours is a great way to get issues to point it at you that would be good for, for reviews and might not be that complex. Uh, there's also the novice tag on Drupal.org, so you can look at issues tag novice, which are there for uh, those who are, are getting started in the community or only have half an hour to devote right there, and they can still uh, contribute at that time. And uh, if you want to work on um, work on any of the big projects, I need to have something for you. What I did is that I, I or what, not, not just what I did, so what the initiatives do for Drupal.ai, for example, is that they hold meetings every two weeks on IRC. So you can go there and you can say you want to get involved in this initiative. And then the initiative lead can help find you a tag that is good fit for you. So I've been tweeting about my initiative and looking for people and also on the IRC meetings I got people. And then I kind of had a, had a side discussion with them one-on-one. -on -one. What are you interested in? What are, what are you, uh, what's your experience? Uh, what kind of work you want to do? And then I paired them with one or two issues and then try to help them through those issues and try to get them in. And it turned out to be very successful for some people, um, which is good. So you can go there and, and, uh, and ask for help there as well. And the rocket ship rocks for that also. Yeah, thank you. Just one comment about the 400 comment issue. If you take the time to read an issue that has 400 comments and you spend that, that, that yeah, for you, take, you've just taken two hours, take another 15 to 30 minutes to write a good issue summary, post that issue summary, then you save every single other person in that issue that time for reading that issue. So please always, always, always do that. And that's something we do in Office Hours too. Yes. We um, haven't mentioned sharks yet, so sometimes core issues can get pretty intense. Do you have advice for um, sort of staying motivated and um, staying happy, I guess, working on core development? Yes, so the, so I'm not sure people heard the question. It, it was not, it was kind of, yeah. So uh, the question was, I, I haven't mentioned charts actually, and, uh, and sometimes issues can get very, um, very hot and, and intimidating. And if, if I have any suggestions for people who, uh, who, uh, who kind of burn out in that or, or, or kind of feel unmotivated by that. Uh, what I do is that I work on all, all kinds of things. So when something gets very hot and, and, uh, and people are, 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 uh, are bike shedding into death, then I can just ignore that and go somewhere else and then do something happy there um, instead of just going off from Drupal and not doing anything. And that maintains my good, uh, my good, my good uh, mindset because I have success. So I go to somewhere else, and I maintain the maintain that I'm I'm successful, and I'm contributing to Drupal Core, and I'm and I'm working with people, and we are doing good stuff, and then I will come back to the other thing later when it wins down, if if it does, and and then and then uh, try to take it from there. So what I try to do is that I'm I'm trying to uh, trying to uh, trying to find other ways to feel successful instead of like trying to get bogged down in one thing and then burning in, burning down, with, burning out with that and going away. Um, are there any plans to improve or any ideas to, to improve the speed of um, adding issues, discussing issues because last Drupal 6 release an issue was added that was, that took about nearly two years to get in. Mm -hmm. Are there any ideas or plans to improve that? So the question was whether there's any ideas or plans to improve uh, issue um, issue time life, so to get get in issues uh, sooner. And there was an example of a, of a Drupal 6 issue that was there for two years and just got fixed. Um, Drupal 6 is very um, scary in a way that there is no testing system and there's a, a huge shortage of people using the development version. Um, so I'm very reluctant to commit uh, big or scary looking changes. And even the, like the RDBCQ is growing big in Drupal 6 because uh, I rely on crowdsourcing for testing. So I rely on you suffering a little bit. 
uh, before uh, before uh, before we can see that it actually worked. So we, we need to have people trying it out and confirming that it works because we don't have a system to test it and we don't have a, a system to, to verify that it will be good. And even then, we make mistakes. That's like the, the last Drupal 6 release only fixed two bugs, two, and both of them were introduced in the previous release. Okay, uh, so we make mistakes, but we are humans. Um, and so we don't have that testing system. We do have a testing system in Drupal 7, which is also not perfect, uh, but it, spe it speeds up a lot of things and it allowed Drupal 7 to make a lot bigger changes. And, and that's part of the reason that we can make even bigger changes in Drupal 8. So for Drupal 6, I don't really have a good solution there, unfortunately. If there are no other questions, then thank you. For those who have arri arrived later, I have a handout version. You can take this session uh, to home with you. So if you don't have a handout, you can, get, uh, you can come uh, forward and get a handout and walk up with that. Thank you. <laughs>